This is a presentation on a simplified method for measuring specific gravity. Mineral density is mass per unit volume and it expressed in grams per cubic centimeter. Specific gravity is the same as the mineral density, but it's expressed without units. It's just a simple number. And you'll see that in almost all mineral references. The density of water for comparison is one gram per cubic centimeter, at least liquid water. So a mineral with a two specific gravity is twice as dense as water, therefore two grams per cubic centimeter. Now this is a very useful method for identifying minerals or at least uh, narrowing down the possibilities. Uh, some of you may remember the uh, crystals sold as barite from Hammam Zariba, Tunisia, back in the 90s. They were uh, identified as barite, but uh, within a year it was determined that they were in fact celestine. And a simple uh, specific gravity test would have identified that difference. Other minerals that are easily distinguished using specific gravity there's smithsonite with a specific gravity much higher than the calcite, yet they look alike. Uh, we already mentioned the barite and celestine. Uh, gertite and hematite frequently look alike, but very different specific gravities. Calcopyrite and pyrite. Field collectors know topaz is noticeably heftier than quartz. Columbite and tantalite. So it's a it's a very useful tool in narrowing down the possibilities of uh, what the mineral species is that you're trying to identify. The classic method for measuring specific gravity and density involves usually a, a lab uh, balance scale and a glass of water to, uh, to suspend the mineral in. So let's review the classic method of measuring specific gravity taught in textbooks. We start with a dry mineral and we weigh it and we get a value of uh, 10. Units don't matter. This could be ounces, kilos, grams, uh, carats. Um, and you know the, the number may come out 32, may come out 3.1. Um, and then we we weigh the measure the uh, mineral suspended in a beaker of water and we're going to get a light lighter weight uh, value everybody knows things weigh less in water in this case we get a value of seven and then the specific gravity is uh, calculated calculated by taking the dry weight and subtracting the wet weight and that gives you a value of three that three uh, for those of you that just want to know what's going on here, happens to equal the weight of the water displaced by the mineral. You then divide the dry weight by the weight of the displaced water, and you get a value of 3.33, which equals the specific gravity. But we had a measurement of 10 dry and a measurement of seven wet. Where did the difference go? Where did the three go? Well, the three was, is, is found at, in the, it's the increased weight of the beaker of water. And what if we could measure that three directly? We, the, we measure the mineral dry, get a value of 10. We measure the increased weight of the beaker once the mineral is suspended in it. We divide the 10 by the 3, we get the 3.33, and that gives us the specific gravity. That is, in essence, the new methodology for measuring specific gravity being proposed here. So forget the classic method. No balance scale is required. Just an electronic scale. This is a simple, uh, inexpensive $20 scale with a 300 gram capacity. We have a cup of water, a 
post-it and a pencil and a calculator. The process starts by zeroing out the scale and then you weigh the mineral. In this case we're, we're set to grams and we get a value of 56.3 grams. Write that down. Then you place the container of water on the scale and you zero it out. So we do not want to know the weight of the cup of water. We want to know how much it's going to increase when we put that mineral in it. Remember back at the previous diagram of the classic method. So you zero the scale out, then you suspend the mineral in the water, totally submerged, and making sure you do not cut touch the cup bottom or sides. And then note the weight and write it down. Now there's one subtlety and I almost eliminated it from this presentation but for maximum accuracy I advise suspending the support for the mineral in the cup of water submerged in the water and then zero it out. That just, it, with, with very small samples and uh, uh, very, very light weights, the volume of water on that support may throw off the number. But w by doing it this way, you get a very accurate calculation. So we've written our number down, and now we have two numbers on our post-it. You divide the first number by the second number, and we get a value of 2.594. So those are our results. That's it. We're done. Shortcomings of this method. It, uh, I use scales that are commensurate with the weight of the specimen. So I have a kitchen scale that has a five pound capacity, or it's about 2.2 kilos. Uh, I have my 300 gram capacity scale, and then I have a very uh, delicate uh, carat scale for, for small gemstones that has a uh, capacity, I believe, about 50 grams. So uh, you could end up spending, you know, we, these two scales alone combined are uh, about $50. And the mineral must be homogenous, so you need uh, a solid crystal without matrix, crystals in matrix cannot be easily measured. One of the interesting things is it's very easy to determine the content of a gold specimen, how much gold is in it using this method. Once you get the specific gravity, the, because the, the weight of, uh, go, the, I'm sorry, the, the density and the specific gravity of gold is known at 19.309, quartz is 2.66. If you, if you weighed this specimen and it calculated out at 2.66, uh, that would say it's almost 100% quartz, or it is 100% quartz. And uh, if it came out at 19.309, you'd say, oh, it's solid gold. And anything in between, so here we have specific gravity calculation. This is a chart that's available on the internet. And if I got 3.984, that tells me it's 38.8% gold. I once bought a collection of uh, 18 gold specimens and uh, used this to calculate the gold content of each specimen. And uh, one specimen came in with a specific gravity of, of 2.6, and it turned out there was no gold in the specimen. There was small flakes of gold leaf glued to the surface. It looked like gold, but there was very little gold in it. So let's put this all together. We have a, a, a crystal. We know it's yellow. We calculated the, the specific gravity of 2.594. For the sake of searching, we're going we're gonna to drop it 2.584 to 2.604. So we give ourselves a range. A quick scratch test determined that the hardness was 5.5. It was harder than apatite, but softer than microcline. It has vitreous luster, transparent, distinct cleavage on the bottom face with conchoidal, lust, uh, conchoidal fracture on the edges. So what do we do with all of this information? We go to min. So not everybody knows that uh, 
this is on mindat.org, uh, but you can go to uh, search. This is on the home page, and you get a drop down menu. And over on the left is uh, search minerals by properties. And up comes a, uh, a column here uh, with a sliding bar that you can start to put in attributes. So we'll start with the hardness of uh, we'll put in five and a half. Uh, and next we'll put in uh, specific gravity at uh, 2.584 to 2.604. That's to allow uh, a margin of error in the measurement. And as we enter attributes over here, uh, MINDAT produces a list of uh, possibilities and uh, tells how they match the criteria. So our, our mineral was yellow, so we'll enter yellow under color. And now we're down to, um, out of a lot of possibilities, we're down to only two species uh, that, that match, Nephilim and Mariolite. But let's keep going. We have a few more attributes that we can add. So we'll uh, check the vitreous luster box, and it is transparent. Here again, there's still only two minerals over here that uh, match. Uh, slide this uh, little bar down, and underneath uh, the uh, transparency, we have uh, cleavage. Uh, click uh, distinct cleavage, and under fracture, it has conchoidal fracture. And now at this point, there's only one mineral that has a 100% match, and that's Mariolite. Uh, if we look at that uh, entry, uh, you can see it, it. everything that matches the criteria that we've put in is, is highlighted. And so when you click on uh, the Mariolite link, that takes you to the page, which has, uh, if you were to scroll down, has all of the, the attributes, including the specific gravity. Uh, but up here are photos. You can click on that, and that brings up uh, the photo gallery that you can scroll through. And uh, you go, keep going through the pages. And whoa, look at this. We have crystals that are almost a dead match for the specimen being measured. And so uh, this is the best way to, uh, to narrow down all of the possibilities given the known information about the mineral. And uh, it is a, uh, a reference that I have not been able to locate any other place on the internet. So uh, the advanced search under mindat.org is a uh, excellent tool to use. So in conclusion, we have uh, no balance lab scale required, common equipment available at most stores, and simple math. And uh, it doesn't get much easier than that. So all mineral collectors can now use this tool for identifying minerals.